Hello, I'm Patrick Brown, and this is Scripture versus Scripture. If you enjoy the material and the lesson that you are going to hear today, please, by all means, like, share, and subscribe my channel with others. Help me grow this channel, and I pray that all those that you do lead this way will be blessed by the material that you're about to receive. Now, on to the lesson, and we're going to talk about today, the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Yes, uh, the Bible tells us plainly that we all as believers should put on the mind of Christ. What does that mean and how do we do it? We're going to talk about four steps to put on the mind of Christ. Sit back and listen to the word of God and hopefully you'll be blessed. Mind of Christ. Point number one is this. In order to put on the mind of Christ, we're going to have to do four things like I mentioned. And we're going to have to read his thoughts to we got to think his thoughts. Three, we got to talk the talk, his talk. And four, we got to walk his walk. I'm going to repeat that. Okay, we got to read his thoughts. We have to think his thoughts. We have to talk his talk and walk his walk. All these of Christ. Think like Christ. Talk like Christ. Walk like Christ. All these like Christ because that's how we put on the mind of Christ. That what happens when we put on the mind of Christ. Scripture says this in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to read his thoughts, read his thoughts. Number one, we have to read his thoughts. Well, how do we do that? We got to read scripture. We got to read his word, everything. That God wants us to know he has written down in the scriptures for our edification, for our understanding, for our learning. Okay. The Bible lets us know in 2 Timothy 3 and 16 that all scriptures are profitable for correction, for reproof, for doctrine, for, for understanding, for, for righteousness, all that. The, so, so we know, and it's all God breathed, it's all God inspired. We know that God's word is God's direction to us, his instruction to us, so that in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, we can be mature, thoroughly furnished to do good works, to do the works that God wants us to do, that God can be pleased with us. That's why we study God's word. It is his thoughts. We have the mind of Christ, right? We have the mind of Christ. Why? In his word, he, had, he, he has made sure he had left us with his very thoughts. There's something that people leave behind after they leave. We call it their will and their testament. Will and testament. Now, it used to be a time that the will and testament could not be challenged by anyone. Now you see people all the time get lawyers and other, other stuff and try to overturn people's will. I don't understand how you can uh, change some of a dead person's thoughts and desires after they're gone. They're not here to defend themselves, but I digress. We're in a society or uh, just that debate that we a person um, dying wishes, wishes can't even be honored anymore. But that's neither here nor there. Christ had left us, you know, went to heaven to be, sit on high in glory. And he left his wishes in his word, in scripture, for us to read his will and his testament. That's what we got. We know his wishes. We know what he wants and desires of us. He knows uh, his standards. Yet, we got a lot of Christians out there who refuse to read them, read it. And because of this, they do not have what Jesus left us, and that is his mind his thoughts, his desires. We have the mind of Christ. All right. Once we read his thoughts, we can go to um, point two. We can go to step two and that we can think his thoughts. Okay. Once we read his thoughts, we can think his thoughts. What I mean, we can think like he thinks. All right. Our position in the world, our, our point of view of, of our things and issues is going to be the same point of view that God has of things and issues about marriage, about premarital sex, about LGBTQ issues about violence, about anything you can name up under the sun, being drunk or not drunk or uh, uh, abortion. All of these views were skewed to the view of Christ. Why? We have the mind of Christ. We read his thoughts. Now we think his thoughts. We think like him. Right. Now, when people get mad at us, we have God's mind, his mindset. Is as, as though they are mad at God in his mindset. When we tell people what God uh, desires of them, and they get mad at us. It's not the messenger they're mad at, okay, which is us in this case. It's God himself. 
They, they don't like God himself. They don't like his message. Because we are only uh, thinking and saying the same thing that he would think and say if Jesus was here. The church is the eyes, ears, mouth, and hands of Christ. All right? We got to think of thoughts. In Romans 2 and 12, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't think like this world thinks. Once we take the mind of Christ, we think like God thinks. We have a new mind. We don't be conformed to this world. Don't don't just fit in to fit in this world. You d d don't uh, bend the peer pressure and, and things like that. Well, they say that wearing these naked clothes is okay because everybody else believes in wearing these naked clothes is okay. Not of God. Uh, not of God is against it because if God is against it, we're against it. Well, they say that the same sex marriage is okay. So everybody believes that I believe. Not if God is against it, if God is against it, then we're against it. Why? We think and believe like God thinks. Well, it's okay to slap somebody back if they attack you first. Not if God is against it, because if God is against it, then we're against it. Why? Because we think like he thinks. It's really that simple, believer. We have to put on the mind of Christ. We have to read his thoughts. We Then we have to think his thoughts. We have to think like, once we know what God thinks, we have to think like he thinks. Guess what? Because God is always right. And if there's any ambiguity or uh, anything else uh, dealing with whatever the subject is, we know that God is right. And we, if we disagree, are wrong. It's as simple as that. All right. So you see, but be transformed by the renewing. Get a new mind. Renew, renew, renew your mind. Christians, we have a new mind. It's no longer our mind. Guess who mind it is? It's Christ's mind. The mind of Christ. We no longer think like we used to think. No longer behave like we used to behave. We have the mind of Christ, so we have a new mind that we, you may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Now, because of your new mind, you know what God's will is, and now you should have the ability to, to perform that which you do. That leads us to point number three. After you read his uh, thoughts, you think his thoughts, then you start to talk his talk. Now you start to tell people what thus said the Lord. You start to tell people what's right and what's wrong. Why? Because you know it. You know it. A lot of Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, all these always on Jesus' case, always uh, confront him, always trying to trick him and everything. And he talked about his doctrine. They didn't like it, just like a lot of Christians don't like it, just like a lot of uh, unbelievers don't like his doctrine and what the Bible has to say, what scripture plainly teaches. Jesus answered them and said this. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. When people get mad at you for talking the talk of Christ, for saying the truth of scripture, for saying the uh, that the, the lifestyle that they're living is wrong, for saying that uh, uh, man does not live for prosperity, man lives to honor and serve Christ. Okay, for saying that uh, the Bible says that riches is wisdom and not money for saying uh all kind of things that scripture teaches and says when people get mad at you okay you can let them know that my doctrine is not mine but his that sent me i'm just saying what god says in scripture now you can take it up with him not me and you mad at me all you want to but you really upset with my master who sent me okay talk is talk and don't be afraid to talk his talk. No matter what day and age you're in, God is with you if you are the mouthpiece of God by speaking the truth. The Bible says plainly, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So a lot of people want to stay in bondage. They don't want to hear the truth because the truth hurts. All right? So now we didn't talk his talk. We talk like Jesus uh, talk. Uh, which is basically imitating what the word says, right? Last but not least, after you read his thoughts, think his thoughts, and start talking like him, you're going to start walking like him. The walk here is to do. Your walk, would, how, how, what kind of walk you do? Your Christian walk. The Christian walk is a straight and narrow path walk, a righteous walk, a holy walk, to do the things that Jesus did or would do, okay? To do the things that the apostles did, right? That's the walk. You need to walk that walk. The Bible says this, 
Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. The Bible says you need to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You got a lot of people that hear the word, hear scripture, hear the truth, and do not do not nothing they heard uh, said to be done. Nothing. Yeah. Forgive. Ah, I'm still mad at them. Uh, give. And I'm going to sting you. I'm not going to share that. <laughs> Love. You know, uh, whatever. <laughs> so they heard it. But they, so the Bible said, wait a minute. You're not a believer just by reading his thoughts or, or, or reading the word or, or even uh, agreeing with his word. You know, well, that's true. I should forget. Well, you need to start doing his word. Okay. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own self. Now, if you don't do God's word, you are deceived. I'm a Christian. No, you're not. Why call me Lord and do not what I say? That's scripture. You don't do what he say. You, you're not, not a Christian. You're not. Right? Be doers of the word and not hearers only. What the Bible plain says, you're deceiving yourself if you think you're a Christian and you don't do what I say. Which is why it's very important to, well, number one, read his thoughts, find out what he says. Right? For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding a natural face in a glass, glass, it will be a mirror. Be like a man, go to the mirror. Why? I go to the mirror when I wake up in the morning and I need to make the corrections. I got lettuce in my teeth, need to brush my teeth. We got crackers in my eyes or that white stuff in the corner of my eye. I need to wash my face. Okay? My hair jacked up. I need to take a comb and comb it. What good is me to look in the mirror? to see all the things and flaws that I have and not make no correction, not do the thing necessary to get rid of the, the, the stuff in my teeth, to get rid of the uh, kinks on my hair, to get rid of uh, the white in my eyes and around my face. See, it is so plain here. He says, for if any be here of the word and not a doer, he's like a man holding a natural face in a glass. Well, he behold it, he sees himself and go his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. So uh, I see everything, whatever, then I turn around from the mirror, walk away and forget all the stuff that I just saw that needs correction. The Bible is a mirror of correction of what God expects and wants of us. When we look at the mirror, and look at ourselves, look at the mirror, and look at ourselves and see what we need to be or God wants us to be and see what we really are and we don't make the correction. What good is looking in the mirror in the first place? What good is reading the Bible? What good is reading God's word? What good is going to Bible study if you're not going to be a doer? You're just only going to be a hearer. That was the Bible, and that was Scripture is asking us. Why? Why do it then? If you're not going to make the changes, don't even worry about it. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, now God is perfection. We read that word. This is what it is. This is what I'm not that. Okay, whatever. You, what you need to work on. Be forgiven. I'm not forgiven. That's what I need to work on. Right, be kind. I'm not kind. That's what I need to work on. It's letting you know exactly where your flaws are. It's the perfect mirror. Right, it's the law of liberty. Right, who's well, looking into the perfect law of liberty and continuing it therein? He being not a forgetful here. I didn't forget when I turned away, when I closed that Bible, I, I remembered everything it said that God expected of me, and I'm working toward doing that. Okay, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, is every man blessed in his deed? No. Obedient man is blessed in his deed. Though the man that's seeking to walk the walk, talk the talk, the person that has the mind of Christ, who reads God's word, who thinks his thoughts, who talks God's talk and walks his walk, this man is going to be blessed in his deed. And I pray that you are that type of man, that you are that type of woman, that just this video that you listen to, that you don't just... Uh, listen to it and nod and say, yeah, this person is right. That you actually take time to meditate on the things that see it. To meditate on, you know, I need to do more Bible study. Or sit here after the video is over with and think to yourself, how am I implementing the word of God and the stuff that I know? How am I going about and making sure that I'm taking the steps to be giving or, or, or put a little money in my console so when I stop at the light and somebody put a, put a sign up and the spirit moved me to give them that I can hurry up and reach in the console and Give them some money while I'm fumbling with my purse and my wallet. How can I make plans and designs that during uh, the holiday season, and I'm going to leave it like that, 
I can give to somebody who cannot give back to me. Forget the holiday season, any time of the year that I can give to somebody who cannot give back to me. How do I put that that I know into action? That is what you need to meditate on because you need to be a doer and not just a hearer of what's right. Amen? All right. This is about Heavenly Father, Father God, Lord, we pray that this lesson hit home, that we all as uh, spiritual believers and children of God, we uh, put on the mind of Christ, Lord, that we do what's right, Lord, by reading your word, Lord, that by thinking the thoughts that you think, Lord, by talking the way that you would talk, Lord, and then finally to walk the Christian walk, to walk the walk of a believer, to walk the walk of someone who is saved by grace of Heavenly Father. Now, Heavenly Father, we pray that all those out here inside of our voice, that they take time to meditate on the things that have been said, the, the word and scripture that have been brought forth, Lord, and to make changes and corrections in those areas where we all fall short. Now, Heavenly Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. As always, please, if this video has been helpful to you, like, share, and subscribe, and God bless you in your Christian walk. I've been Pat Brown, and this was Scripture versus Scripture.